welcome back to my channel thank you to all my amazing subscribers thank you for the love thank you for the support if you are new here welcome to my channel please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on the awesome content that I have for you on Wednesday I put out a video teaching you how to make your own pajamas pants and today you have the second part of this video where I show you how to make your pajamas top and if you haven't seen the video for last week just click on the card here or check the link in the description bar I put a link there and you can definitely check it out if you would like to see how I did this definitely keep watching if you enjoyed this video please give this video a thumbs up don't forget to share don't forget to comment because I love to read from and you if there's anything specific that you'd like to see me do let me know in the comment section and I'll definitely see what I can try my hands on it thank you once again for joining me on this channel thank you for watching me and see you in my next video to make your pajamas top you need the following items Start off by drawing your vertical side line. On your side line, mark your neck depth of 1 inch and your neck width of 3 inches. Connect this point with a pattern master as shown. Next, mark half the shoulder measurement horizontally. Afterwards, mark your shoulder to bust points, half length and top length measurements. These are vertical measurements. Mark them, square out and label appropriately. To locate the MO depth line, Mark 2 inches above the bust line and square out as shown. Mark half the shoulder measurement horizontally from the top to the MO depth line and connect with dotted lines as shown. On the dotted line, mark 1 inch to account for the shoulder slant and connect with the neck width point with a slant line. With your pattern master, draw in your armhole curve. It is absolutely fine if it goes inward a bit. On the armhole depth line and bust line, indicate one quarter of the bust measurement plus one inch allowance. On the waistline, Indicate one quarter of the waist measurements plus one and a half inches allowance or two inches allowance depending on how loosely fit you want your pyjamas top to be. On the top length line, indicate one quarter of the bust measurements plus two inches allowance to allow room for the top to sit on your upper hip. Connect the points as shown. Label as back and cut. To draft your front pattern, draw your sideline of 2 inches vertically and place your back pattern on it making sure that the back pattern aligns with the sideline. Pin your back pattern firmly to the paper and then cut, making sure you trace out the neckline, shoulder, armhole, sides and hem of the front as shown. Don't cut off the 2 inches sideline yet. Unpin and label as front. Lower the front neck depth by one and a half inches and redraw the neck curve using your pattern master. Extend the line to the sideline extension. On the sideline extension, mark one inch or three quarter of an inch, depending on how wide you want your notch color to be. I went with three quarter of an inch eventually, then connect this with a slightly curved line back to the sideline and cut as shown.
Place your back pattern piece on your folded fabric and pin. Ensure the center back line of the paper aligns with the fabric fold. Mark your allowances of half an inch all around and one inch at the M and cut. For the front, repeat the process of placing your pattern on the folded fabric and marking out your allowances, then cutting. After cutting both back and front pieces, unpin and set aside. Next, cut out your front facing. To do this, fold your fabric with the folded edge opposite you, straighten the edges if necessary, then place your front piece on it as shown. Pin and cut your front facing, then go ahead to cut your interfacing and iron it on. Cut out your back facing by placing it on a folded piece of fabric, making sure the folds align. Mark out the facing shoulder width so that it matches with what you have on the front. For me, I have a shoulder width of 1.5 inches in front. Then cut out the neckline. Afterwards, unpin, then following the curve, mark your shoulder width all around till you get to the shoulder line as shown. Cut your facing and cut your interfacing, then iron on the interfacing to the facing. Afterwards, overlock or hem the edges of both the back facing and the front facing as shown. I went ahead to overlock the edges of my facing for both the front and the back. Next, cut out your bias strips. If you don't know how to, it's easy. Get a rectangular or square shaped fabric and draw a diagonal line across. Continue drawing diagonal lines all through depending on the size that you want as shown. Each diagonal line is a bias strip. I've gone ahead to do this on paper so that you can see. And now I'm going to cut out my bias strip on my fabric. Please note that the bias strip width is solely dependent on your preference and the purpose for which you need it. I decided to have my strips one and a half inches wide. Cut out a couple of strips and as you can see they are stretchy which means they were cut on the bias grain. Fold into two and iron. After ironing your bias strips, open up your front pieces and mark two inches into the neckline. Pin your bias strips from these 2 inches points, making sure to allow some excess bias before that point. Pin your bias all around the edge, making sure the folded edge faces inwards as shown. Afterwards, sew your bias onto the fabric on a 0.25 inch sewing allowance and repeat the same process for the second side. Next, pin your facing to the front piece making sure the shoulder line, neckline and edges match. 
so you're facing on a 0.5 inch sewing allowance starting at the 2 inches mark. After sewing the face into the fabric, snip off the corner and notch the 2 inches mark. Turn it inside out and push out the corner with something sharp. You should have something like this. Iron your front piece and then go ahead to join your back piece to your front piece at the shoulder. To do this, place your back piece on the front piece with the right sides facing each other and pin the shoulders together as shown. Sew on a 0.5 inch sewing allowance. Afterwards, Join your back facing to your front facing on a 0.5 inch sewing allowance. The next step is to measure the neck for the collar and to do this you need to carefully fold your neckline into two and then measure from the two inches point up to the center fold. After measuring my neckline on fold at six inches, the next thing to do is to draft your collar pattern. To draft your collar pattern, determine your collar width and indicate on paper. My desired collar width is one and a half inches. After indicating this on the edge of my paper, I go ahead and draw a curved line that is 6 inches long with the aid of my pattern master. Then I measure 1.5 inches all around for uniformity. Next, cut out your pattern as shown. Using this pattern, Cut out two pieces of fabric on fold with 0.5 inch sewing allowance all around and one piece of interface with no sewing allowance. Afterwards, iron the interface onto one of the pieces. Next, shaping the edge of your collar as shown. Pin your bias strip onto your collar following the shape as shown. After pinning, go ahead and sew your bias strip onto your collar on a 0.25 inch sewing allowance. Then cover your collar with the second piece and sew on a 0.5 inch sewing allowance. Turn inside out after sewing and iron. To attach the collar to the neckline, find the midpoints of the neckline, facing and collar respectively. Then match the collar midpoint to the neckline midpoint and pin. 
Pin both sides of the collar till you get to the 2 inches neck point mark as shown. Afterwards, pin the facing over the collar so that the collar is in between the facing and the neckline. Ensure that the excess bias is hanging out. After pinning, it should look like this. Sew on a 0.5 inch sewing allowance. After sewing, trim off the bias and notch the neckline. Iron the neckline as shown. Next, sew the sides together on a 0.5 inch sewing allowance. After sewing and overlocking the sides, the next thing to do is optional. The next step is the pockets. To sew in the pockets, locate the pocket position and for this, I wanted it to be about 3 inches above the bust point. After locating the pocket position, determine the pocket dimension. I want the pocket for this to be 4 inches wide by 4.5 inches long. Go ahead and cut out your fabric with these dimensions, making sure you add your sewing allowances. So I cut out a piece of fabric 5 inches by 5.5 inches. We also need to cut out another strip to attach to the top and for that I cut out 4 inches by 5.5 inches because it will be folded to give 1.5 inches plus 0.5 inches seam allowance. Sew your bias to the bigger fabric which is the pocket fabric. Then sew the second strip of fabric to it with the front side of the strip facing the back side of the pocket fabric. Afterwards, fold over the strip and top stitch as shown. Next, fold half an inch in on the left, right and bottom, then iron. Pin your pocket to the position on your top. I felt my pocket was a tad long. So I removed it to trim off an inch, then went back to fix it onto the top. I folded in the edges of my pocket because I like the look of it. After pinning your pocket to your top, sew it with your machine as close to the edge as possible. Mm -hmm. 
After sewing the pockets, the next thing to do is the hem. To hem your top, fold over your facing so that the right side is facing the right side of the fabric. Then pin the facing to the fabric as shown. Mark your 1 inch sewing allowance and sew the facing to the fabric. Afterwards, carefully hem the rest of your top, starting just before the end of the facing so that it flows seamlessly. After hemming, your pyjamas top should look like this. Trim off any excesses and cut all loose thread. Moving on to the sleeves, which is kind of like the last part of your pyjamas top, measure the armhole and then fold your fabric into four as shown. Mark your armhole measurements horizontally, then your sleeve length measurements vertically. On your sleeve length line, Mark half of your bicep measurements. Then mark your arm all measurements horizontally all the way down from the top. On the arm all line, mark 5 inches in and draw in your arm all curve as shown. Add your 1 inch sewing allowance to the bicep line and connect back to the 5 inch drop point. Measure the ammo curve to check that you have enough plus sewing allowance, then cut. After cutting, notch the sleeve crown and then sew your bias onto the end of the sleeves. Cut out two strips that are 4 inches wide and sew to the back of the sleeves with the right sides against the back. After sewing, fold over and top stitch as shown, then iron. Your sleeve should look like this. Fold your sleeve into two and cut off any excess that you might have. Then sew on a 1 inch sewing allowance. Next, attach or fix your sleeves to your armhole by matching your sleeve seam to your side seam and your sleeve crown to your shoulder line. I find it convenient for me to work from the inside out.
pin your sleeves all around and sew on a 0.5 inch sewing allowance. After sewing your sleeves to your pyjamas top, your pyjamas top should look like this. At this point, it is important to mention that the allowance for the buttonhole stand has already been added to the pattern when we added one inch to the back and front pattern respectively. Next up, mark your buttonhole placement on your top. I kept my buttonholes 3 inches away from each other and I marked the points that I want them on my top. Then I go ahead and make my button holes using my sewing machine and fix the buttons. I'll be using cover buttons that I made and if you'd like to see how I made the button holes and cover button, let me know in the comments and I'll make a video for that. Thank you very much for watching this video guys. We have come to the very end and our pyjamas top is now ready. If you've not seen the video of the pyjamas pants, I'll put a link in the description bar and also a card above so you can check it out. If you enjoyed this video, let me know and please give this video a thumbs up. Please share, comment and subscribe if you haven't. Thank you and see you in my next video. Bye.